All right, guys and ladies, welcome back. Um, this, I guess, is the moment that you have been waiting for, and that is to actually paint over the action line drawings that we've done. Um, I went ahead and drew out my um, action lines with oil pastel, or you could use a black crayon if you go really heavy with that. And I've used all kinds of lines that show movement. I've got diagonals, I have zigzag, I have curved, um, and I have a, a few wavy ones here. Um, but those were the lines, and it was just supposed to be abstract. It's not supposed to be a picture of something. You know, the nice thing about abstract um, designs is that you can turn it any which way, and it'll look like something different each time. So if you're not really crazy about the way it looks now, you could like turn it this way. And if you like that better, you could, you know, leave it that way. Or, you know, you can turn it that way and see if you like it better. I think I almost like it better that way. Or, you know, you could again, you could turn it that way and see, you know, which way you like it the best. So I think I'm actually going to leave it like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but in order to paint this so it doesn't look like a, a big disastrous mess, we have been doing some studies of color and the color wheel. And we know that colors that are next to each other, like prime uh, red and orange, are safe to paint near each other because if they mix, it makes an intermediate color. Or if you go to red over here and then you find its neighbor when you mix those two, you know, that's safe to mix together. What you don't want to do is go across the street and paint those two next to each other because the ones that are across from each other on the color wheel, those are the ones that are going to make those really great neutral earthy colors like browns and grays and greens that are great if you're trying to paint, you know, a picture of what you see outside in nature. But for this particular assignment, we want those colors to stay really bright and crisp. And so we don't want them to mix into, um, into something that um, belongs more in nature and less in something, you know, very colorful and bright. So, to get started, it doesn't matter, you know, which color you start with, as long as you kind of keep going in order. So, you know, ignore my, my black and my brown there, but if I wanted to start with orange, I know I can go red next, because, you know, orange and red mix will make red-orange. Or if I went to yellow next, I could I could put yellow right next to my orange because yellow and orange make yellow orange. Also, or if I started with green, I could go I could paint with green and then then go blue because that would make a blue green. Or I could go yellow next, you know, because I know that would make a yellow green. So as long as when I'm painting, I use the color that's next to it and I'm not skipping over a bunch to go paint something else then I know um, how I, when I put the paint on there, it's safe. Or if I'm not sure, you know, I can always double check my color wheel and make sure that the color that I'm about to put on there is actually, you know, a neighbor to that color. So, with that being said, I think we should just get started. So, dust that off, get myself set up here. Okay, the hard part is deciding which color to start with. Mm. I think I'm just going to start with red. I am. I'm going to get my brush nice and fluffy wet. And I'm just going to kind of roll it in that color. I don't really want to dig. I just want to kind of roll it. Now, if we were using the paints from class, you know, you'd be going round and round. But I know most of you are going to have a, a set of paints like this at home. So that's why in these videos I am using um, the watercolor set. So I think I'm going to go with this right up here. Now the cool thing about oil pastels or if you've colored really hard with your crayon is that when you paint over it, 
the oil pastel is still going to show. See? It resists the paint. Um, and resist just means to resist. It's not going to allow the paint to stick in those areas. So I know that if I put purple next to red, it's going to make a red violet, and that's why I chose to go with the purple next. So while my paint is still wet on here, if I paint right next to it, and I let those colors mix together right through there, it's going to make a red violet. And it's okay that these are overlapping because we kind of want that to happen. We've spent all this time learning how to, you know, mix colors. Why not mix colors, you know? Why not let some of that happen? I'm going to give this one some more red so it'll pull over a little bit more of that purple. And I'm just going to kind of let it mix itself and see what happens. Sometimes that's nice too. So I've, I've got a purple streak right through here. So I know that I can put blue next to it because blue and violet will make a blue violet. So if I go up here, I'm going to make a little drop. Maybe I want this to go that way. And I want that to go right off my paper. Maybe I want that to go that way. So if this blue were to mix with my red, is that going to be okay? Because blue is a primary color, right? And red is a primary color and we learned that if two primary colors mix together they make a secondary color so if i let this blue go right next to that red maybe even near that purple It might mix and make a violet for me. Oh, that was neat right there. Can you see that? Let's see if I can zoom in so you guys can see that. Where it's wicking. It's like the paint is pulling the other paint over. Let me see. Let me scooch this up so you can maybe see it happening. Right there. Let's see if I can make it happen for you. So if I put a little bit more blue right there. That's not what I meant. This is what I meant right here. How it looks like it's kind of, um, you know how like when you drink from a straw, how the the straw pulls the um, drink up so you can you know, have something to drink. Well, when you paint wet paint over the top of wet paint, it'll spread, but sometimes it'll also pull it if one side of the paper is a little more wet than the other side, and it just kind of pulls it over into something else. So I'm just going to kind of play with that. I'm going to let that go and see what happens. So let me zoom back out here a little bit so you can see the whole thing again. There we go. Lay this down flat. Ooh, I really like what's happening up here. Some of that purple is pulling into the blue, and it's turning kind of a blue-violet. Yeah, let's see what else we can get going on here. Okay, so... I know I've got blue right here, and the colors that are next to blue are either um, violet or green, or I know that yellow and blue 
make green. So if I wanted to, next to this blue, I could put yellow, because if they mix, they're gonna make green. Or if I put green next to it, it's gonna make a blue green. So let's just see what happens when I put some green next to it. So I'm gonna put this green next to the blue but I'm going to try to keep it away from the red because red and green are across from each other. And that's going to make those, you know, green, gray, brown colors that are great for trees, but not for this assignment. I'll bring some of that here. And right here where this paint started to dry, if I just kind of blend that in. I just kind of blend that in. It will re-wet my paint in that spot. Oh, it's pulling a little red in there. If I just stay away from it, maybe it won't turn muddy. Oh, I like that. It's kind of like a little shadow right there. Now you might notice that I'm using a bigger brush to do this because I want there to be more water in my brush because I want this paint to spread and kind of do its own thing. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to, when you're, when you're doing abstract work, it doesn't have to be like this goes here and that goes there and this has to be there. I mean, it's, it's more, you have a little more freedom to kind of let the medium do its thing okay you don't have to be so contrived with it you don't have to be so intentional so i've got blue here and i know that green i mean green i know that yellow and blue make green because so far I've got a lot of cool colors going on. I've got greens and blues that by putting this little bit of yellow in here, it's going to draw people's eye into this spot. And they're going to go, wow, I wonder why she put that yellow there, you know, or, and it's going to draw people's attention to that curve. So let's see if we can make some green with that yellow and blue right there. I think I'm going to let it carry over to this side of my oil pastel a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. Bring some yellow over here. Get a nice yellow green going on. Ooh, get back over there. Clean up that green that I just accidentally stuck in the yellow. And I want to kind of run blocker on that green. I don't want that green to get into other colors that I may put up here in a minute. So I'm going to use a yellow to kind of divide that space a little bit. Dab, dab, dab. I'm not rubbing. I'm just dabbing. Yeah, I'm gonna let that go that way. I don't have to follow the lines. I can make new lines with the paint. So maybe, maybe. Got this blue up here in the corner. Slide my paper down. I think I'm gonna put some red up there. Right like this. Wow. 
right next to that blue. Right there. So this is where you get to kind of play, you know? You get to just see what happens. As long as your colors are visiting their neighbors, they're not going across the street, you're going to be okay. Okay? So, I've got that big swoopy yellow. I have not used any orange yet, so I think it's time to use some orange somewhere. I'm going to dip into my orange, just kind of roll that brush around a little bit. Where do I want the orange? Let's see. Bring it right here. And I'm just going to direct it. I want it to go that way. So maybe it'll follow the others. I feel like I'm channeling my inner Bob Ross here. Happy little colors. Bob is our classroom mascot, by the way. Put a little bit of that in that red, because red and orange make red orange. And orange and yellow make yellow orange. So I'm safe as long as I keep it away from that purple that's right there. I'm doing okay. Yeah, and I'm getting all kinds of wicking down in here. I'm just going to let that paint spread and pull those other colors into itself. Let's see, what have I not used? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, I used everything. Yeah. All right, let's see. What else do I want to do? Orange, I can go red or I can go yellow. I've already got lots of yellow, so I'm going to go red because that will get me closer to purple, and then I can bring some purples and blues over here. So I'm going to go with some red right through here. Why not? Oh, that looks like fire. It's nice. And if I wanted to, I could even put some along here because red and yellow make orange. Red and orange make red orange. I'm still safe with my color mixing. right there. Looks like it needed it. It needed something to go, no, go this way. Bring some of that in there. That right there kind of reminds me, um, my son and I, we got to go out west a couple summers ago. That reminds me of the rocks and things I see out there. If you ever get a chance to go to national parks out west, please go. And then send me your pictures. Grown-ups who might be watching this video, I hope you're painting along with us because it's actually very relaxing, especially abstract, because you don't really have to think about it. You just kind of go, ooh, I like that color there. Ooh, I like that color there. And then at the end, you have all these colors that you like everywhere, and hey, good. Good to go. I need to block this orange because I'm about to bring some purple in there. I'm going to block it with some red. Yep. Dab in my 
purple. Oh, I got yellow in there too, so I'm going to keep my purple away from that yellow because that's one of those across the street colors with yellow, and that may not be real pretty. So it'll turn green or gray. Which there's nothing wrong with green or gray, but we just we want a bright green, not a tree green on this one. Bring the ends of that a little bit. Bring that down here. Where that red is still wet, I'm kind of, oh, it's wicking right there. Oh, I love it when it does that. Oh, yeah. It's that wet on wet. When you paint wet paint on top of other wet paint, it just makes these cool little veins and things. And it's just really neat to watch it do its thing. My kids know it helps if you make the sound effects. Liking that. Get some purple up here. I'm not sure my students have ever seen me paint an entire painting before, so this might be kind of different for them. It's usually here, I'm only going to do this much, and then now you guys start. All this online stuff has its drawbacks, but sometimes moments like this kind of has its strengths. So I'm saving that because I don't know what I want to do in those triangles yet. I know I want to do something, but I just don't know what yet. So just kind of letting it tell me here in a minute. I need some more blue. I need some blue in here. Now, warm colors look like they come towards the viewer. And cool colors recede, or they look like they go back away from the viewer. So, if you notice over here on this side, it's kind of like fading away, but this warm area is like popping. So, if there's an area of your painting that you really like and you want it to stand out, you might choose the warmer colors like reds, oranges, yellows. But if there's an area that you're like, hmm, not as great as I hoped, you can um, maybe put some cooler colors in there. And that will make it kind of disappear into the background and people won't notice it as much. I have this cool little hook thing happen in here. Can I bring it on around? I don't know. We'll see. So I've got blue up there and I've got yellow. I can bring some red. I think I want some purple in here. No, I want some green. I want some blue green right there. That's what I want. I don't have enough of that turquoisey blue green in here yet. Oh, neat. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yep, happy, happy art teacher. That's nice. And if it gets to my yellow, that is okay. Because it'll make yellow green. Oh, I like that. I'm just going to bring it up. That's what I'm going to put there. That's it. That's just bright enough to stand out in that one little spot. Yay, happy. So I've got green up there now, so that only leaves me a couple of options. I can go blue or I can go yellow. So I've already got yellow and I got some blue started around there. So I guess I'm going to go with some blue just so I don't make any mud colors in this corner up here. There we go. And I'm gonna pop a little purple right there in that corner. And then 
we will call this finished. Yep. I think so. Maybe that'll spread a little bit more. I like that. All right, ladies and fellas. Well, I did not intend for this to take 25 minutes, but I kind of got to working on it and forgot about the time. And you know how it is when you're in the middle of an art project and it's time to go. Everyone hates the cleanup bell. So anyway, that is our Action Lines painting. Um, I'm going to not move this for a little while so all those spots can dry and wick and do their little thing. And I'm going to look for these little white spots like right there. I'm just going to touch it with a little bit of water to pull some color into those little white corners there that are bothering me right there. There we go. So that's that. Um, thanks for watching if you hung in there for the whole thing. But um, that's kind of how it works when you're trying to um, color mix on a painting using intermediate colors and primary and secondaries all together kind of at the same time. So if you have, um, if you did your color wheel and you understood how that worked and then you did your intermediate color mixing and you understood how that worked, I cannot wait to see how your painting turned out with the action lines and applying what you've learned. So with that being said, I will see you guys on our next art assignment. Bye.